Tom, what happened? Hey, there was no revenue miss. Uh, what you have to do is take into account that we uh, had a terrific uh, transaction for shareholders. We sold some Florida assets at a price that was roughly double our share price at the time. That speaks for most of the revenue difference. The other revenue difference was really great for customers. That is, uh, we had really cheap fuel cost. We don't make any money on fuel in our energy sales to customers. And because fuel prices were lower, we passed that along to customers. That's great stuff. On one hand, great for shareholders. On the other hand, great for customers. So what do you think that the market is reacting to negatively? Like, why aren't they getting that right now? Oh, they probably just need to read through the uh, details. It's just been released. And I think once they see that, it'll be fine. Look, if you think about last year, we were by far the number one stock in our industry. We essentially doubled the utility index last year. We've been on quite a run, and I think we've got quite a run to go. The stock's been performing beautifully. TSR last year, over 50%. Uh, and obviously, going forward, a big part of that is going to be uh, the nuclear facility uh, that you're building. The prices have doubled. It's behind schedule, cost overruns. Can you give me insight into are you going to really load fuel in November? Is that still 100 percent on track? Well, look, uh, let's first hit the cost issue. The cost borne by our customers will be less than what was originally projected when the unit was ordered by the Georgia Public Service Commission. We know that Westinghouse took a great deal of those losses. We know that Toshiba paid us $3.7 billion because Westinghouse went bankrupt. So when you add those things up, other people absorbed the cost increases associated with the schedule delays, not our customers. Customers will benefit for years to come. Uh, so with respect to the schedule going forward, we have a regulatory commitment to finish Unit 3 by November 21, and we're very confident about that, and Unit 4 by November of 22, and we're very confident about that. And we believe that we will meet the rest of our uh, construction within our budget. What are the next key steps, though, that investors can kind of key in on as they look forward to those dates? Yeah, sure. I, I, I think we're going to lay that out in our earnings call at 1 o'clock today. But we have uh, several key milestones uh, during uh, this year, 2020, culminating in, we hope, uh, fuel load by the end of the year. That is an aggressive schedule and puts us on track to deliver this unit in service by May. But let me assure everybody, the key date is November. I think we'll deliver it by then. Uh, and one question for you as we go forward, when you see natural gas prices in the U.S. under $2, MMBTU, is that going to cannibalize demand for wind and solar since that's been falling? How are you seeing the market dynamics play out? Yeah, it's not an or proposition. Look, we need the whole portfolio. I've been saying that now. I'm in my 10th year as CEO, and I think we've been the leading spokespeople for this idea of all the arrows in the quiver. We need the full portfolio. Look, the, the fact that natural gas prices are so cheap and the supply of gas is so plentiful, I think it remains a dominant part of the portfolio for years to come. Uh, certainly, as technologies advance and prices continue to drop, renewables will only grow in importance. You've got to think about these things together, natural gas, renewables, and nuclear.